play Might be some day far away Now I'm going fast, so I'm switching lanes Didn't wanna switch up on the game ah, 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 ah. What's up guys, Slimeball FM here and let's get straight to it Follow my Twitch now, we stream 4-7 to 7 every day I can, Eastern Standard Time So since the last episode, in the league we've been on a great run We tied this match versus Marseille But since then it's just been all victories We had a 2-0 win against Amiens And then we went to into Europe, we played against Sociedad And we won 3-1 with 2 goals for our young striker Fernando Saicedo one from Kazri, and then they scored at the very end of the match. But we were very dominant throughout. And then a 4 0 win against Valenciennes or Vassi, where uh, we even saw a goal from Cristaldo. So, you know, that's that's how you know that we're firing on all cylinders. And then a win, a 2 0 win against Bordeaux, where Madi Kamara and uh, Wabi Kazri scored. And then um, this was the really unfortunate one our home fixture against Michelin, we lost 1 0. So, if we go to the Europa League, um, if we go to the competitions, we are still technically in second place. Uh, because of goal differential, I think because a head to head is really what, how it works. But um, we definitely need to start winning. Um, we need to start winning some of these matches. And while the board uh, expectation, we're not uh, supposed to get past the group stage. We're just supposed to be competitive, which is kind of surprising to th if you think about it. I definitely think that we want to be doing better than that personally. Um, and then our last match uh, before this episode's about to start was a two one win with another goal from Mati Kamara and. Um, we won 2-1 uh, against uh, Leo. It was a late goal from him, too. It was after a pretty controversial red card. Um, I didn't really think it was a, ye a second yellow, but Renato Sanchez was sent off, and obviously that helped benefit us. So here's the lineup for the um, the match against Ren. This is the first match of the episode. Um, we have Kochev at the back, Pineda, Vallejo, Varnier, and Nick. And then we have... See, even though Manny Kamara has been playing pretty well in this role, I realized what I could do is actually just bring DUC in and then push Mvia up the pitch and have Mvia and Tibling play at center mid together, especially because we've seen Mvia's goal-scoring ability. So this is going to be the first match I try this. But I think DUC is just a much better player than um, Manny Kamara is. So that's unfortunate for him. You know, obviously he loses his starting spot, but I just realized that that was even a possibility. And then we have Kazri and Wagner on the wings and Cristaldo up top still. So here's the lineup uh, for the... Uh, here's the lineup that they are playing. They're playing a 4-2-3-1 shape. I know none of their players. Um. Oh no 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 no! They have boob. They have booby on the bench. Oh. See, I thought I had seen him linked to a move to like Manchester United, but he's actually gone to Ren. He scored eleven goals in thirty-three matches. That's not terrible. They have booby on the bench. Okay. Well, that's good to see. Well, not. It's not good to see that he's behind Sam Lammers, but um, booby is. I love Booby. Okay. Yeah, I probably should have thought of this earlier, huh? Jesus Vallejo takes it up the pitch, finds Pineda out wide, in, who heads into the path of Kazri, and we're just playing it around. This is wonderful. We have 76% possession in the first 13 minutes of this match. Um, and Villa, who does have that more advanced role today in the advanced playmaker spot. Um, look at this football that we're playing. This is just wonderful stuff and now pineda has been unlocked in plenty of space and he decides to take this shot something i mentioned in the last episode i don't necessarily know if i like the fact that he's been doing that more often but um yeah he hasn't been putting in as many crosses on the wing instead cutting in and um put it in trying to take shots uh, he did score a goal like that but now wagner let me shut up wagner's throw on goal hopefully he can score wow that's a he's really terrible he's really an awful player even more than replacing cristaldo i think replacing wagner is going to be a a big priority in the uh, winter transfer window, especially because I forgot to tell you guys this, but the board actually gave us 10 million to, uh, pounds. I think they just saw how well we've been doing in the in the group stage and in the league, and just uh, decided to um, you know inf infuse us with a bit of cash. So that's a, a great great gesture from the board. But now ball in towards uh, Vallejo. But instead, uh, Barre is trying to counter us, and it's two on two here. He's played into the path of Rafinha, the Brazilian. That's a poor tackle, but Kochev is there to make the save. He has the second most shutouts in the league, and, and has been one of the best uh, goalies in the division. And just 11, 19 years old, obviously, that's incredible. Something I don't understand though is his value is still only 155,000 pounds. Which um, hopefully that doesn't mean that if a, if a team like a, a big team puts in a, like a, a pretty measly offer, like let's say like nine, ten million, that they won't let me reject it. I'm gonna put in Buwanga in for Wagner. It, it may be a, a, a change that I, I, I try to make permanently, but for right now, I'm just going to keep making them, uh, keep subbing them out because Wagner's just been awful this season, but he also actually plays the position. So now Pineda up the line. Pineda, this is a great run, but Rafinha takes it from him. And now they could counter here, but we are first to the ball. Varnier, who's been excellent this season, along with Vallejo, they have to be two of our best players for sure. Nick, ball across into Cristaldo. How has anyone missed that? How does anyone in the world miss that? I guess it's only it's, it's, I guess it's just my fault, right? It's just my fault for not prioritizing this. Why would I keep him? Pineda's gonna take his. Uh, no, he he passes it this time. I mean, Cristaldo just he just can't finish anything. 
He just he's just worthless. He's just missing everything. <laughs> you suck. Golly. And one last chance with a minute and a half left. The ball in. Is it a penalty? Could this be a penalty kick? The it looks like the ref is running over to the VAR stand, and I think this will be a penalty kick. Could we absolutely steal the three points away from Ren here? Because although we've been the much better team, 65% possession, we, have, we ha haven't we have scored yet, and it's just the 93rd minute. I mean, they must be heartbroken here, and I think Budaboos, who I've just subbed on um, for Jan and Villa, is going to take the penalty, and if he misses here, I'm going to be livid. But please score. Please score, Ryan. Riyadh, my apologies. Riyadh scores the penalty. It's 1-0. And what, with a dramatic late goal, Budaboos gets his first goal of the season. And Etienne takes all three points away from this match. And with that with that performance, Jan and Villas had an absolutely unbelievable performance uh, in the further advanced role with a 98% pass completion. That's exceptional. Uh, Wagner has another just stinker. Um, I'm going to say that wasn't good enough. And then I... But to show you guys where that puts us... After 12 matches, it does put us up into second place. Although Monaco can pass us if they win their next match. Um, Strasbourg has still just not fallen off at all yet. They haven't lost a match this entire season. They've won nine matches and drawn two. But I just think they have to fall off at some point. However, Dries Mertens has just... The 34-year-old Dries Mertens has absolutely transformed the Strasbourg side into a, into a title challenger, not just a Champions League challenger. And I just also want to say that it looks like they're... Even though we just bought this is our first season with playing with him because we bought him last year, it looks like there's already about there's already some interest around Marco Varnier from West Ham, and you know the fact that going to the Premier League, getting Premier League, Premier League money may be too much for him to resist, especially only on twenty eight thousand per week. So we just have to hope that um, West Ham does not decide to. Um, uh, poach one of our players. Well, I think they're still good. So here's the lineup for the next match. It's very similar to the last match. Um, we just put in Palencia for Nick, who's still suspended, and then we put in Saicedo um, for uh, Cristaldo because Cristaldo is not registered in this competition, and neither is um, Jurich. So that's how we're, we're going to line up. And then on the bench, we have uh, Cola, Budaboos, Mukanya, Vucher, uh, Buanga, and Larry. So uh, with that being said, let's get straight to it. So here's the lineup that they're playing. Um, we're in Denmark. I think it's in Denmark, right? Michelin, is that in Denmark? Um, let me click on one of these people. They are in Denmark, yes. Look at that football knowledge. All right, um, Matthias Anderson, or Mikhail, my apologies. Mikhail Anderson was the one who scored in the last match that we played um, in the one nil loss that we had there. Um, and then they have Another Anderson, he's Joel Anderson, Reese Scholes, Fietchenko. Um, I feel like I've actually tried to sign him in a few times in, uh, in other series, so I think he's pretty. He's probably pretty decent. Um, besides that, I'm not familiar with any of their other players, so let's get with. Let's just get to it. First chance of the match comes in the fourth minute when Kadri puts the ball in for Varnier and he's just hit the top of the crossbar. In this, in these first like five ten minutes, we have been really dominating the possession, so hopefully we can um, win the away me a leg just like they did to us. Well. Fuck. Anderson puts a ball in. Simon Okasun just comes across. And now, um, and, and uh, the coach if can't get to it. I mean, it's not like that was his fault. But now we're already down 1-0 yet again. It was an early goal last time. It's an early goal this time. And we're down 1-0 to Michelin yet again. Yet again, they, they're beating us. I'm not exactly sure what it is about their side. But, oh, what a goal from Jan and Villa. We haven't seen as much of it this year. But he just him hitting it from outside the box, there's nothing they can do about it. And we're right back into the match yet again. Um, Look at look at this strike from Jan and Villa. Deusi finds Pineda on the left. That's a brilliant ball from Deusi. And then Pineda just plays it inside to Villa. And then Villa just, okay, he, he may have been, he, that may have been poor goalkeeping. But at the same time, he's hit it very hard. And there's, and, um... Otteson cannot keep it out either way. But now yeah, there's a, there seems to be another chance. Anderson finds Krayev in the middle. And they're just trying to keep it. They're just keeping the ball, but they're not really advancing it too much until that incisive pass. Now Anderson in the box can get a cross in, but Vallejo does a brilliant job to intercept it. And now we could be the, uh, the counters. Uh, Kai, Saicedo, Saicedo, that's a brilliant ball from Saicedo, and Wagner's just an absolute piece of fucking human garbage. It's a great ball from Saicedo, though. Now Kazri. Puts the corner in. Looks for Vallejo. Instead finds Varnier. And Varnier's header goes off the bar over the goalkeeper and into the goal. And we're up 2-1 now. That's a great header from Varnier. And Kazri puts it in a great corner here. That's Yeah, that's an excellent corner from Kazri. And I mean, there's, there's no stopping that header from Varnier. 
And as we make it to um, half time, it looks like uh, Sociedad and Chelsea are still actually tied 0-0 in their match. So if if the results stay the same, um, we would not only uh, stay second in the group, but we'd also uh, we'd also get a two point lead here. However, if Chelsea win. Um, Chelsea win, then um, we would actually have a three-point lead in the group, and I feel like that'd be a much more comfortable position, so we should probably just be cheering for Chelsea to get the first place, and then us to uh, be pretty comfortable in second. Now we have a throw in here, Pineda, find Saicedo, and we're just playing it on this left side. Pineda, he could do his uh, shot, but instead he finds Kazri, and Kazri scores a brilliant goal, and we've been scoring a lot of goals from outside the box this season. We saw one from Tibling, we saw one from Nvidia earlier in this match, and now Kazri, that's a brilliant hit from him. Pineda just cuts in, makes his man fall, gets past the second man, and then plays it into Kazri, who just on the first time gets it past the goalkeeper, who does not seem to be very good, I'm not going to lie, but at the same time, we have made it very difficult for him today. And now, another, yet another highlight, uh, Odison, who's just been absolutely lambasted from our team, tr uh, tries to find an option, but he plays a brilliant ball into Anderson there. That's a great tackle from Pineda. Uh, now Kaba, sorry Kaba, um, is, plays the ball, and now Sviatchenko gets into space. He could put a cross in, but Varnier's first to it. Now Wagner, could he finally do something well? He plays it to Kochev to do it for him instead because he's absolutely useless. Pineda now has tons of space on his side, and we know uh, what he can do on the offensive side of uh, the ball. Uh, but instead, we decided to just play play it more methodically. Tibbling now. Tibbling shot. He tries to score a wonder goal, but it's now just into the path of Palencia. Puts a ball in. Finds Kazri, and Kazri's had an excellent game today. That's a great ball from Palencia. It's just lofted into the path of Wabi Kazri. But at the same time, he still does have to make that run, and that's a beautiful goal all around from the team. Odison scrumbles. That's not a word. He, he picks the ball up is what I'm trying to say. I was trying to say he, like, swallows it up. I don't know. That's a terrible tackle from Palencia. Now Anderson continues to go through. What a goal from Michael Anderson. It's his second goal against us in the Europa League so far. I mean, that's an excellent goal. He gets past two men. He makes them. Look, he makes both defenders look like absolute fools. Palencia definitely makes an ill-advised tackle there. There's no way he's getting to that ball. But then Anderson gets past Varnier, who kind of lunges at the ball just to like slightly, and then puts a brilliant finish in. And there's nothing Kochev can do to save the ball from that range. Now Timling tackles the ball. He looks for Saicedo on, up, up front, I think. And Saicedo is still going to press. He's still running after it. But um, there's really not too much of a chance he's going to get to that. But now we can reload the attack. Tibling finds Wagner. Please pass the ball, Wagner. No, he doesn't. But he could put a good ball in here. He does sort of put a good ball in there. Kazri was on the far post, and he found him. But Kazri's volley just goes over the goal. Now, Varnier in the box. Can he find an option? He does uh, find Palencia, who has a little bit of space, but I would want him to cut inside. Instead, he gets the ball tackled from him. And now it looks like Michelin could counter here. Okasun has a man on the right and he finds him. Anderson could put the ball in and it finds Mikhail Anderson who has a, had a real chance there to actually score a goal and you know get his uh, team back into the game but instead he hits the bar and we're still safe. I've made a triple sub here. I put in Usman Kola for um, Pineda. I've put, uh, taken out Tibling and put in Budaboos and then I took out uh, Wabi Kajra. I know he's on a hat trick but I just don't want anything to happen to him. He's had a mad magnificent game so I mean obviously uh, I, and Buanga is a quality player, so just for the last five minutes, you know, give him a little bit of a run out. Now Varnier in the box, Vallejo, uh, just they're just playing it around the box, and I think this could this could be the last highlight of the match, as it, uh, you know, there is only four minutes left. But Cola does a brilliant job to find him via in the inside. Now the substitute Budabuz gets into the box, he looks for the finish, but Odison actually makes a quite a good save there for the first time in this match. Now this actually does seem to be the last highlight with 50 seconds left. Vallejo has the ball, he finds Diusi, and there's just too many players in too much space, and that's really what's hurt Michelin this game. Palencia just hasn't been nobody pressed the ball there the entire time he got into the box but Odison obviously made a pretty decent save there now they could counter that's a brilliant punt his distribution seems to be the reason he's in goal I mean he could just be a play a field player instead because he's been absolutely useless in stopping the ball but in you know oh wow that's a horrendous tackle from Palenia I mean that has to be some sort of card but um I mean, this has to be the end of the match. That's a great ball into Buanga, though. Before, and maybe Saicedo can get one before the end of the match. It doesn't look like it. That's an absolute, That was an absolutely brilliant ball, though. And now, uh, in a dominant performance, we went 4-2. And um, if it stayed that the way it was, which it looks like it did. Yes, it stayed as a tie. We do go into second place. But technically, we do have a chance to win the group. But I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't hold my breath about that one. Anyway, if you guys have enjoyed the video, um, give it a like, subscribe, and thank you very much. I'll see you next time. On the dash, I'm cynical, purple, tinted, Lambo, indigo, two girls from my show, identical, out of this world that they went to a festival, they're going crazy.